Hey everybody, um, I'm gonna talk about granular synthesis and uh, specifically Traveler and S layer and uh, also Woosh. I mean, you can see it here. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about what I was influenced by and um, my approach. Uh, I'll make, it'll be a bit of a more of a long form video. Um, you can sort of see my thinking. Um, so yeah, a couple things you'll need if you want to do this. Um, tons from Traveler, tons from Woosh, S Layer, and uh, in terms of processing, you don't have to like you don't need the plugins I have for the processing. Like all that stuff is just adding color. So whatever you have at your disposal, use it. I think there's a couple things you can do to you know, make stuff stand out a little bit, and I'll, I'll speak about that, but in terms of the specific plugins, like, I... It's important to some degree, but if you have an alternative, that's totally fine. And the whole point is coming with something, coming up with something unique, and something you've done that you can use in your designs, and, you know, hopefully other people haven't heard stuff like that before, or that sort of color, so... Um, I think that's that's the point. Um, you should just use it. What's your disposal? You don't need all the fancy plugins, other than Traveler, <laughs> Woosh, and S Layer. Um, so when I watched Dune, um, I was I was like I was blown away by the sound design. Uh, it was minimalistic, but specifically there were some parts which I I was like I've never heard this type of stuff before. It sounded so cool. And um, it was mainly like the shields and the ornithopters um, I thought were awesome. Thankfully, I love the podcast, definitely check it out, Tonebenders. They ended up having a, a podcast episode with the sound designers for Dune. Um, and they talked about the use of Traveler and specifically how they used it to get certain textures. Um, and I immediately tried it out um so i'd used traveler before but i'd never never looked at the granular part of it um and you can feed stuff in here and what they said they they did was they used an extremely short duration to get like a flutter and uh they talked a little about a little bit about the source they used so they said first they used gunshots to try get that click which didn't end up working and then they took synth source and cut that up and it was with artifacts and clicks and pops and that ended up giving a really cool result. So let me show what I came up with. And it, it's not the Dune Shield, but it's something else and it's something new, at least I think. Um, so it's new to me uh, and it's not something that I have made before. So it was nice to have that addition to my library and I could use that in designs. And um, yeah, it, I've used it in so much stuff. It, I think it's really, it has a really interesting texture. And you'll come up with your own thing, and it'll add a new, unique texture to your design. And that's that's what it's... And then you can share it, and then you can show, and then people will learn. That's great. And so, a big thing about granular synthesis is um, is rendering out and refeeding. So, I started off with like a synth source, and I was like, okay, what's a good way to get clicks and pops? And that's the click and outputting the click. So, I took some synth source, I did that, and I ended up getting this. And so I had that and I was like, okay, well, that's quite light and I'll feed that into the synth. But what if I also put like a variation of that that has a bit more beef? So I use, you know, like low end or, or driver, you can use R base um, or knock, great plugin. Um, and you end up with something like this. And so that will give a completely different texture and that's cool. Um, so, for example, a couple, like I wanted, this is cut up. This is, I fed this back in and then cut it up. 
um, and you can end up getting something like this. And so you can feed that back into Traveler and you get a new thing. So it's just patience and reiteration and um, yeah, let's pop over to Traveler. Uh, so uh, the first thing, clicky source. So this was the first clicky thing I showed here, this one, the, yeah, just the output from click. And now we can add like the beefy one. In terms of what's happening in Traveler, uh, you need to go over to the granular section, you set it to loop. Um, this specifically is a short duration. Two seems to be the sweet spot. Um, you can mess around with the speed. You can mess around with the shift. Shift, um, it means like how the Doppler is going to sort of come in. So the more to the left it is, the more sharply it's going to come in, which means you get a nice transient. If it's more to the right, you're going to get more of a lead in shape. Um, I guess it's just like the envelope shape of how it's gonna come in like whether it's gradual or fast um don't take my word for that read the manual um attenuation you can mess around with i guess the more to the right it is the more uh sort of silence you're gonna have towards the ends um the doppler i keep quite high just to get that sort of doppler effect um I didn't really use the LFO, uh, mainly because the duration is so short. So what I did instead was I used the parameter modulation and I set it to random. And yeah, just have a play, do, some, do your own thing. Um, you can mess around with direction, um, whether you want that reversed sort of sound or whether you just want the sort of to keep it true to the sound, sound file. Uh, you can mess around with the granular envelope, whether you want it sharp or smooth or in between. Mess around with jitter, pitch uh, automation. The more dense it is, it means it's just like there's more particles, I guess. I don't know. Or buffers. Oh, it's not buffers. Just um, more spawn points, I guess. So the more to the right it is, the more dense the sound is going to sound. And the less it's like the more scarce, more scarce it's going to sound. Uh, size is the scan size, um, so more of an area. One thing you can also do is like you don't have to modulate this. You can also just manually do it, and like it will really change the output where where the sort of position is, like where it starts. Um, but I I like to just yeah just let this render out a bunch of stuff. So once you have a bunch of that, you render that out, and it can, you can either feed it back into Traveler. Or you can open up S layer, and uh, you can see here I've put a bunch of these sound files that I've done, um, and I set this up so it's only reading the, the four. Obviously, you can put more. Four, is, four was good enough for me, at least for this example. I usually put a few more uh, just to so I can like hit random, and then you can see here there's a lot more samples that it can take um mess around with these values i'm doing some parameter modulation on like the grain size or just the grain um you can randomize stress and uh, stretch and cut off all that stuff just play around you don't have to one to one these values um but then you end up getting something like this So that's just feeding like some of the output from Traveler and it just starts, it goes wild. Um, and here, like again, like all I'm doing is I'm loading up these files. Uh, I'm sending them to loop as well. And yeah, like from there, I guess the next 
thing we could do is we can put it back into Traveler. Uh, <laughs> and then here I'm taking more of a, I guess, traditional approach with Traveler, which is longer duration, like more of a whoosh. Uh, but I'm still using the granular part, and now because it's a bit longer, I can use the LFO. Um, sometimes you also need to be patient with Traveler, just especially with the granular part, like let it build up the buffers. You can see here it's quite quiet, um, but if we just let it run for a little bit, um, it'll start to up with some cool results, hopefully. Let's be patient. Here we go. Oh, no. One day. Remember the first time I was doing this, I was like, surely something's wrong. But uh, if we're just patient, it'll start. Hopefully. Sometimes you just need to restart. So very organic, very granular, synthetic, kind of get that hybridness, which I think is really cool. Um, a lot of people, I don't, I forgot if I mentioned this already. A lot of people associate granular synth with noise and like true. Yeah. Um, since we're using like <laughs> clicks and pops, I guess that mitigates it somewhat. But like once you start at like using S layer and layering this stuff up, you might introduce some noise, but I think that's okay. I think noise is not your enemy. There's definitely a place for it. Um, and I think it can add like a nice layer to a design. Um, there's definitely places where you don't want noise, but completely mitigating it from everything is like, I don't, I don't think that's a good thing. Um, and again, there's also specific types of noise um, and how you define it. Uh, but I think this sounds cool. And I've definitely found place for it in my designs and on different projects. Nice. Uh, okay, so now that we have all of that, um, you can <laughs> you can take you can take that. You could feed it back in. Uh, you can also uh, um, cut that up. You know, and like get try get some artifacts out of there, and then you can end up with this type of stuff. Very cool. So um, the next thing we can do is we can feed each of these different layers. So the clicky beef, just the normal clicky source, this tonal source, whatever comes out of S layer, we can feed that back into whoosh. And now we can get some like cool designed whooshes. Um, so I, I absolutely love whoosh. I've been, I've used it so much. It, it's every time I'm going to make source, I'm like, I have to, you know, incorporate whoosh somehow. Uh, you, you know with your designs like you can just feed the stuff in you can get some cool new layers uh you can it acts as a nice like morphing tool as well you have like xenaptic morph and all that stuff you can also use whoosh um because you're feeding in four different layers um i'm quickly gonna run through the setup um as well like how to do the whole whoosh live thing um i'll leave a blog post as well from carl knight um who oh that originally saw that and then i set it up um so you can follow that. I'll quickly just show what's happening behind the scenes. Um, I forgot. You also need a you need reactor. So you need reactor as well for S layer and whoosh. Um, so a couple things you need to do. You need to edit. You need to enter edit mode in reactor once you have whoosh loaded up. Then you can uh, you need to go into the source mix here. So you click on that and you go structure. Originally these are all linked up here. So you need to create uh, new inputs. 
uh, eight new inputs. So you have four stereo tracks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and then here you need to also attach these here into the to the four ends. And here you need to set up the routing. So you only want stereo out, but you want eight channels in. So you can do that here, the different track channels. Um, in Reaper, you need to make sure that the first source is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That was really rough. Um, definitely check out the blog post. It'll explain a bit more, but like visually seeing it here maybe helps a little bit. You can see what's happened. Um, yeah, so once that once that's happened, uh, you can. Okay, I think S layer uses MIDI, so you just need to trigger it, but you need to have Traveler open, so this is getting a little bit messy. Right, so we have all of our toys open. <laughs> That's just for the sake of having it open. Um, right, here we go. Oh yeah, before I do that, the am I soloing this? Yes, okay. So now we're getting cool whooshes of everything combined together. So in terms of like how to use whoosh and stuff, one thing I really like to do is to parameter modulate this, for example. Uh, I just need to set that to random and maybe we don't want it full strength. Cool. Okay, so we can do that. We can parameter modulate um, any of these things as well. The mix shape, the latitude, all that stuff. You know, just experiment. Try something new. Uh, another thing we can do is we can change the sync mode here, and we can use manual, for example. And so once this is playing, we can do this. Which is nice. Uh, I think like sometimes having the manual control is cool. Uh, you can do the same with uh, Traveler. You can go manual here and do this to stuff. Um, yeah, I get. I, I guess that's it. I think it's up to you really how you proceed and like what source you put in. I think it's mainly just the technique. Um, is nice to know. Uh, and. Take it as far as you can. Keep rendering and refeeding and rendering and refeeding. You're gonna come up with something interesting. And like again, like 90% of the time, maybe it's not. But the 10% is all you need to start, you know, gathering interesting source into your library that you can incorporate in your designs and your redesigns and all that stuff. Um, in terms of processing. Hello. Okay. Um, in terms of processing. I, there's a couple things I think you need to do. Uh, denoising, sure. You can use voice denoise, which is pretty light. Uh, I always, I mean, it's good to turn this down. Usually it's at 12. You can turn it down to six. You can turn it down to three. Um, with stuff like denoising, it's nice to do it gradually. Don't just denoise in one go, set up a couple. Uh, meaning, you know, maybe have one that's set to three at the start of your chain and another that's set to three later in the chain. Uh, and it's like a gradual buildup, so you, you're not like losing fidelity. Um, I really like Biome. I'm gonna cover this in another video, uh, but Biome is great. It has a granul granulator, um, and it has an input follow as, as well. Um, I will cover that later. Um, Ubic G, just again like another granular layer. You can use Portal. You can add like really light OTT to add some um, detail. You can do the same with like Fresh Air, for example. Um, another good thing to do, I mean, yeah, multiband compression is cool, but let's say you have loads of noise in like one band. Um, so let's load up Pro MB, for example, where is it? 
uh, let's say I have loads of noise in the high band. You can do expansion to... So, like, every time something comes in... Every time something comes in, it will exp expand, and then when, once it's quiet, like, reach it below a threshold, it'll come down. I know they do this a lot with, like, music and stuff. Um, someone internally showed it to me as well. It blew my mind. I was like, I never thought of doing that. Um, also, bringing down levels. It's okay to make stuff quieter so that you can bump it up with a plugin, for example. Because um, each of these plugins has a flavor, um, and so to get those flavors, it's nice to push it. You don't want like the source coming in to just be peaking, although you know here it's peaking, but that's because of all, all the uh, processing I'm doing. I want that's you shouldn't render it out like that. Um, but I have so much going on. Um, so for example, like turning it down minus six, and then bringing it up throughout the chain, um, and then like the last stage is you know putting up. Uh, uh, limiter, a c compression limiter, for example. Um, and you don't need this plugin, like, you can use Fab FabL if you have it. You can use, like, Waves L316 or whatever, which is, like, a multiband limiter. Um, so it's just all these... Yeah, also, like, Soothe, um, any sort of DSing maybe is nice to reduce reduce harsh harshness. Um, I'm sort of jumping through this, but like the main point is like you don't need all these plugins. Like I have them at my disposal, and I'm very fortunate to have it. Um, but you could use anything else, you know. Like Reaper comes with loads of really good plugins, and now they have scripts where you can actually build up your own sort of plugins um, uh, visually, which is awesome. So just. Yeah, just use what you have. You'll come up with something unique, and that's that's the whole point. Um, so yeah, I, I hope that was useful. Um, if you have any questions at all, just let me know. Um, I'll try to answer them. Uh, feel free to DM me um, either on LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever. Um, you can talk about granular synthesis. Um, but yeah, hope that was useful. Thank you very much.